All right, guys, my name is Luke Reether, and this podcast is made for more of the advanced filmmakers wanting to level up their game. And with us today, we got a special guest, Gordon Willis Jr. You know, I grew up, you know, for those of you who don't know, I grew up um, in the film business with my father, who is um, a very prominent cinematographer, did uh, the Godfather movies and a lot of Woody Allen movies. Um, so I, I got to see all that, but I got to see it at a very high level. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that at the time. I just thought it was very interesting people and a very interesting way to make, make a living. But I got to see how things were done properly. You know, I, I I got to see the pecking order of a working film set, you know, who the director is and who a producer is and who a DP is, um, how to block and stage shots. So I, I wasn't a stranger to that. So I, I sort of had my smell test was really good. You know, if I if I saw something coming that was uh, uh, sloppy, you know, if somebody called me and wanted to do a job and didn't have the right answers or didn't have answers to my questions, you know, it was probably, probably something to be avoided or ask more questions or get more details or start talking to people about who those people were. You know, it, it's always good to have a network in within the business because everybody knows everybody guaranteed. Yes. And I think that's a key thing right there is network because uh, especially for what you said there, because uh, without a network, you have, I guess, no idea on who is the good people and who's the bad people and who not to go with, you know? Exactly right. Um, it's exactly right. And, and But the tendency is, you know, when you're first getting in the business is to go with anybody. Mm hmm. You know, yeah. you want you want you want to get you know. I mean, the cliche is I just got to get my 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 foot my foot in the door, right? But you're not really getting your foot in the door if you're working for somebody that's um, a little sketchy or if the project's not right because you tend to elevate yourself by working with people that are um, do doing good work. You yeah, know? and and the people that are doing good work, they need you as much as the bad people, you know, they're all hiring people, you know, Woody Allen's production company, Ron Howard's production company, they're hiring people just as much as the, the not so good people are. So yeah. you, you need to seek those people out and, and, and try to get in some way, somehow. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you were blessed because you already were in the industry. And so the people that, weren't like growing up in this industry and but they want to learn more on how to get into it how how would you level them up how would you uh tell them and describe it to them um yeah it was, it's it used to be a, a father-son business you know on all all different levels you know it's, it's only been recently where it's opened up to a uh, lots and lots of people you know because there's just so much more content you know that's needed um the times have changed, of course. Mm -hmm. I would say um, just research. I mean, with the internet, you can find the people who are producing things. I mean, look at look at look at the commercials that you like. Look at the films that you like. Yeah, uh, and and look them up. See who see who's doing them. They'll take a phone call. They when when you're going through that initial screening process with the director in uh, initial you know, interview with a new director, what kind of red flags would you watch out for to see if, you know, something works for you? Well, I was, I'm always the director, you know, mm -hmm. so from my point of view, I'm, ha I'm having a sort of a schizophrenic discussion with myself, but I'm talking to the producer, which would be kind of the equivalent. And I'm, mostly I'm trying to see what kind of budget they have, mm -hmm. how many days they have to do it, um what's the support you know what who do you have as a cinematographer who do you who who um you know the size of the crew you know i always have my own people that i'm going to bring in you know they don't they don't choose my people for me i i choose my own people and mm -hmm. work with them over pretty much my whole career you know, you have a crew that traveled. Even when I go to Europe or, or if I'm overseas, I'm I'm bringing my people with me. 
you know, so I, I need to know they have a budget for that. And if they're, and if the answers are like, no, 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 or we don't know, that's probably a big red flag. Mm, okay. You know? And and the same would go for a director. If I was just a cinematographer talking to a director, I'd want to know what kind of basically support and budget they have and what they're trying. And from an artistic point of view, what are they trying to achieve? You know, what's my contribution going to be to the project? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I think most importantly is trying to line up with your vision, you know, uh, with his vision, but also with your own vision, because, you know, if your vision's kind of clashed and obviously you guys are not going to be a good fit. <laughs> You're going to have trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to have trouble because, because my one thing my dad always taught me is, is be your own barometer. You have to be your own barometer, right? You, yeah. I mean, with, with almost everything I, I would say in life, except, except your relationship with your wife and then, you know, her barometer rules everything. Yeah. I, I would guess. But you you need to know what's good, what you like, what's lit well, and that's you. You're not you're not relying on somebody else to tell you, oh, move that light a little bit or change this or change that. That's not anybody's prerogative but yours. Mm -hmm. And um that way you you're always either gonna get the credit or you're gonna get the blame. But at least you know at least you know. Yeah. Right? You, at least you know that what your contribution is yeah exactly and that that could be the struggle right there is trying to figure out your contribution to the set you know <laughs> always but you know in an ideal um situation you're you know as a dp you're you're second in charge of the entire movie mm -hmm. basically depending on who you talk to you know it's your baby to to run the set you know, director of photography, there's, there's not a single department on a set that doesn't um, depend on you and your decisions or is going to make, you know, I mean, even wardrobe, wardrobe would dare not make a decision without talking to the DP or production oh. design or um, even the director, the director is not going to uh, just, just make up a scene without running it through the director of photography i think that one thing i can say is when you find the right set uh you would know because the director and you will just basically become good friends you know you will hit it <laughs> off in the Hopefully. beginning i mean seriously it's just like uh you don't see one director with a different dp on every set it's always almost always the same uh dp on set with him because yeah, they, always. They, they they build a trust Always. And if you don't see it, it's usually because somebody was booked <laughs> and, and couldn't do it. Um, but you rarely hear of just people jumping around, you know, it's a real film family. You know, yeah. you find somebody and they work, you work closely together, you know, a director and a cinematographer before a movie or a commercial or whatever, whatever you're doing is done. You're, you spend a lot of time with each other, Talk, talking about it and mm -hmm. boarding it out as best you can and and talking about annoyingly long amounts big amounts of time it, you know before you actually pull the trigger on the camera sort of going back to what we were talking about originally yeah there, there you know to get to get to, to, for red flags and things like that i mean you do want to get your foot in the door Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to make it sound like it's all doom and gloom and only work for the best of the best, because there are people out there that are doing things on the cheap and there are people doing things really well for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but you just got to find those guys. Yeah. And, you know, being... and a lot of that's just your gut. Yeah. And I feel like the, that, you know, levels down to, you know, being taken advantage of as well, because there's a lot of sure. companies that's wanting to take advantage. And that's the reason why I wanted to do this subject matter is just because there there's one there's a couple companies here in Florida that literally have they don't pay any of their crew. They don't pay any of their cast. And, you know, people are doing these films like left and right because they want the quote unquote IMDb credits. Yeah. And it's I, I feel like it, it's more I mean, I don't know if you would agree with me on this, but it would be more um, I don't even know how to word it. It's 
it, it's more hurting you than you know making you better it, you know? it is hurt it is hurting you yeah and not even not even kind of hurting you it, i mean it's because you're never going to go you're never going to get the experience and you're never going to see um a certain quality achieved that you can you can learn from and you're not going to meet people that are able to network with mm-hmm. and um the only people it's helping are maybe the people that are trying to get you to work for nothing yeah and maybe not even them i mean i, I mean it's it's almost like a uh a survival kind of way of making productions you know yeah. for them even you know because they can't be making a lot of money you know mm-hmm. so they're just trying to eke out a living at your I, expense i think my major red flag right off the bat is like oh um we don't have a big budget you know <laughs> you, you'll hear that a lot well you know well and you'll hear that in a legitimate way too though you'll if it's a legitimate production company and they come to you and say we don't have a big budget yeah, that's one thing. But if it's somebody you've never heard of or that's got kind of a sketchy reputation and they say that it's, you know, I wouldn't do it. It's a wash. I remember one set that I was on um it was two years ago and the director was manipulative and he was very controlling and he promised a lot of things and never, you know, fell through. And I was just a camera assistant on there. I wasn't the director of photography. Actually, my instructor was. And he actually made my wife cry on set. <laughs> it was always, that bad. Productive. Yeah, it was that bad. And uh, the 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 uh, director of photography actually quit on set. And he actually was trying to start, a, uh, not start, but uh, the director was trying to start a fight with the director of photography on set and like ripping off his shirt and we're like man this is a red flag we should have seen this from the get-go that sounds like a miami production or something <laughs> it, it was it was in florida it was in south florida and you know the it was a i think it was like a week-long set and like the first week they uh put us up in a i like to call it a roach motel and it was one of those motels that was bugs all over the place and it's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's none. Of, there's none of that when you get to a even a, a mid level. <laughs> you, but you know, they, they take they generally take really good care of the crew and the and the people. I mean, it's a big family. I mean, yeah. I've, I've been working with the same people for my whole career, and I and I still talk to a lot of them every day. You know, in one in some form or another. That is actually one thing that we were able to take away from that set. I mean, even though that production has never been, um, you know, distributed to anything, it hasn't even been made. Um, but all the cast and crew, we still talk together. And actually, I just recently worked on a project with one of the cast members uh, on uh he does a fishing group on YouTube and he, he's one of the coolest guys. His name is Kat, uh, Kit Taylor. And yeah, we just become friends, you know? And yeah, and that's what you want. That's what you want, mm-hmm. you, you know, because the more of those people you have under your belt, the better collaboration. And, and, yeah. And they do become real friends. I mean, it's not just work friends. I mean, they're, you're all sort of bonded in a, the same, yeah. kind, of, same and, kind of way. And that goes back to what you were saying about networking, because once you are knowing, once you know everybody in this industry, that's when you can actually start weeding out directors, I think, right? You can just... Yeah, I I, th- I think so. You know, I mean, there's always new, new directors coming along and um, you want you want to see where those directors came from. You know, did they just come out of school and want to become directors and they're mm-hmm. going to prove to everybody what a great director they are and they want you to work for free and they're going to show you what they can do. They're not going to be directors. Maybe, maybe, I don't think so. It just, it's just, the business just doesn't work that way. I mean, if you, if you're, you're going to be a production assistant, you're going to be some sort of assistant working for somebody who's hopefully pretty good. And then you're going to work your way up and then yeah. you're going to be solid you're going to be a solid person, solid director with knowledge. You're not going to come out of school wanting to be a writer or or a 
producer or director and be a producer or director. It, it just doesn't happen that way. No, it doesn't. Not gonna get hired. I don't know who would hire you. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of people do graduate from school with that mentality, you know, thinking that they're going to just automatically make it into the next level. And that, it, take it from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a mis basic misunderstanding of the way the business works. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's um, you know, but if you do the work and you hook in with the right people, you're going to do great. I mean, we, I mean, the business needs people. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people. You just got to you got to do the time and and uh, and learn the craft. Yeah. Well, er every every film set is a new adventure starting, a new journey starting. You know. So, I mean, that's the, that's the deal. Yeah, that's the you, fun part. You, you never know what you're going to run into. That's where red flags come in. You have to make sure that you screen them properly, making sure because you're going to be with these people, guys, for a whole month or even longer, depending on the film yeah. set. So you got to be in with the right people. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of marriages and a lot of girlfriends and boyfriends that come out of sets you know, because proximity and good company and you all bond pretty heavily, you know, by the, by the time things are done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, which is one of the, one of the things I like, you know, yeah. because, because it's just, uh, I don't know. It feels, it feels natural to me. You know, yeah. I came from that, you know, from, um, family experience. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a million ways in this business to put stuff together and do stuff you know, you just want to pick the right road. You know, there's, you don't want to be with people that aren't doing a good job. Mm -mm. Um, you want people that have a, a, a vision of what they're doing and are working towards that and are doing good content. You know, I mean, you don't want to do some skeezy productions to get experience because you're really not getting per experience. You're, you're just getting used. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. that's not to say not, don't work for free, because if you're working on something that's um, of value, well, uh, you know, the value you're getting out of it is seeing seeing it done. Wow, that's valuable advice. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, if you want to work for free, I mean, make it worth your while. I, that's what I would say, you know. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, I have a, you know, not to not to go off into the weeds again, but no, I love it. A, a friend of mine who's very, very experienced cameraman, um, who's no longer with us, but he was, he's very good and uh, long time in the industry. He did one of his last project was for Sotomayor, um, and he asked his name is Gary. Asked him to work for free because mm -hmm. he had no budget. But I mean, this is a guy who's an Oscar winner, you know, million dollar budgets. And um, he traded him out. He said, well, we're, we're going to do it on a cruise ship. So we'll bring your wife, hang out on the cruise ship, you know, help me out. And that, that'll be our trade. So, I mean, it was great for him and it was great yeah. for his wife and it was great for Sotomayor. And, you know, that, that was, uh, so he was willing to do it. Well. That's a great trade-off. I think that our key things, though, uh, for today was networking is the most crucial thing that you could take away from, and uh, that's 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 actually networking, 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 and that's the way that you can avoid bad sets because if you don't network, you're not going to know these people for Adam, but someone else is going to know them. But yeah. I can't you know, tell you how many phone calls I've made to friends saying, do you know who this is? Who's this guy? Who's this girl? You know? Yeah. And if you don't know them, then, you know, someone knows them in the industry, at yeah. least someone. Man, yeah. that's... And they'll respond. People will re respond pretty quick because if um, they're a bad player, they love to spread that, that news. And then the, the other takeaway from this is uh what your friends say about that person please take it to heart <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> believe them <laughs> believe them because they're being a friend to you you know they're telling you straight up and if you want to be that the idiot that doesn't want to believe them and then you learn the hard way well be your guest you know here you because go it, re it really is a just a really creative business with really good people in it yeah and uh i can't think of a better way to make a living and and, and it's i can't imagine the future is just getting more and more um open to everybody mm -hmm. you know and we need more and more people you know yeah. that are that are good and talented and um all different levels of work i mean it doesn't have to be a movie or a major movie i mean there's lots of filmmaking to be done out there 